comes out and uh you know uh it's the it's the metamorphosis of 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 kind of that you know the evolving of of a species into something new and so we 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 like that we like that uh symbolism and we like the idea of uh kind of emerging you know it was part of you know like you know post sec uh you know kind of spreading our wings rising from the ashes the the phoenix so to speak but um that was quite you know that's been that's been used quite a bit in the web3 space so um we you know eventually landed on chrysalis but it's it's about transforming assets and it's about the re-emerging of um you know what we've built together uh, as a community from that box and, and transferring to to chrysalis so you know we like it i hope everybody else likes it um it's um you know it's one of our digital platforms well there will be multiple digital platforms but this is our our original uh uh, digital platform. Well, you know, the, the other thing I like about it, Chad, is that it's kind of the incubator, right? The, 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 the chrysalis is kind of the incubator for, for the butterfly and, uh, and that process of transition. And so as we start to bring, you know, additional projects on, they'll have that opportunity to, to eventually evolve into their own L2 project and kind of stand on their own. Yeah, exactly. So it's 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 our incubator. Um, it's a good it's a good uh, uh, summer summarization of it for our L two projects. And, and when we start to bring those on, we'll get to that in a in a little bit later in the presentation. But um, yeah, absolutely. And and that's the point. The point is, you know, we're 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 tokenizing. Um, you know, using our innovation to tokenize and to bring uh, you know uh, worthy projects to the Web three space and continuing to to grow our community and you know spread our wings and expand and uh again you know the symbolism of of the butterfly and 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 the newness um you know of it emerging is uh you know something that's you know kind of uh you know these uh revenue streams and, and be able to help people you know uh participate in some of these uh some of these projects and some of these industries that they they haven't had um, the ability until now with blockchain tech technology um, going forward that they haven't been able to participate in. So been reserved for, you know, a uh, coveted few. And we're now, you know, breaking down those walls and those barriers of entry and giving people the opportunity to participate in a lot of these different commodities and different uh, industries. So with that said, this is, uh, these are our, this is our ecosystem um you know this is our seven projects that uh our legacy projects um there are more to come um going forward you know our core values our innovation you know transparency our sustainability accessibility decentralization and responsibility and you know the sustainability really comes with the uh with one of our other platforms that we've developed with promax which is the Earth Exchange, which is, um, you know, going to kick in a lot of doors uh, at, a, at, a, at a country level. Um, uh, as uh, everyone's well aware, you know, I was just in Indonesia signing a deal with uh, that government. There are many other governments at the table through not only our efforts, but also our, our, our partners' efforts um, in the UAE and with uh, uh, the, the handoff of, of uh the uh, COP28, um, the conference of parties uh, that was held in the UAE last year when, when we uh, originally um, uh, unveiled the, 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 the MVP um, for the Earth Exchange, and now going into Azerbaijan for uh, COP29, um, and there being that, that very strong relationship between those two governments. Um, there's many exciting things happening. Um, with regards to um, that platform. Um, we have a third platform that is coming and um, has already uh, already has uh, uh, a pledge of over $1 billion in assets um, to that particular platform that's being built out now um, and will be uh, our third uh, digital platform. 
and uh, we're excited about that. So everyone can can stay tuned for more announcements that will be coming shortly about that platform and 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 what it what it will be able to do and what it particularly focuses on. But we're very excited about that. And um, and then we have a fourth platform that will be uh, coming uh, probably towards the end of this year or early 2025, um, which um, is being built now as well and has been in the works for some time. Um, but uh, it's a little bit uh, premature to talk about that fourth platform, but we will eventually have four digital platforms um, and they all do uh, very different things, but um, you know, the ecosystem will continue to grow and expand and with that, will come uh, the opportunity to attract a lot of new uh, and, and fresh eyes to what we're doing at Chrysalis and uh, what we've set out to do and, and the evolution of how we're gonna build this, uh, build this community and um, continue to attract uh, many more people to our movement and um, continue down the, the path of our core values. Um, innovation is at you know, the core of what we do. Um, you know, at Promax Digital, we're always looking for uh, the next best technologies. Um, everything is based around technologies, and um, those that 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 stay on the cutting edge of technology and continue to uh, curate and build uh, the the technical revolution are going to win and win big. So, um, this is all about um, us and our partners bringing together the latest and greatest of the technologies that we can to our digital platforms and uh, creating opportunities for our movement members to participate in and, and, and be able to, you know, uh, you know, earn real world value. So that I'll go to the next slide. So the, the, the transformation uh, has begun. Um, Debt box is turning into chrysalis. Um, you know, here at Chrysalis, we're thinking outside the box. So uh, everything is about to change and for the better. So the debt token will will uh, will transform into Chris, um, uh, serving as the ecosystem's new utility token and will act as the gateway uh, for access to the Chrysalis digital platform uh, and its token rewards projects. Um, each oh, yeah, that's that's gonna that's gonna roll out first on Pancake Swap, and then will be accepted in uh, some other exchanges. Um, do you want to cover any of those exchanges now, or uh, you want to wait to unveil those at a later date as well? Yeah, we're gonna save the the exchanges. We're 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 gonna um, we're gonna first consolidate a little bit. Um, uh, we don't see the need to be on um, some of these, you know, tier five and tier four uh, exchanges any longer. We've we've kind of, you know, evolved and proven ourselves um, that we've got the staying power. Um, uh, in the beginning, it was, you know, a credibility issue to be on multiple exchanges, but um, we're now uh, trying to focus more on quality, not quantity. So um, there's many different discussions going on with tier one exchanges. Um, that are interested in uh, working with us for a, a varying number of reasons, but part of it is because of the the varying platforms that we're bringing to 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 reality and to bear. Um, uh, Earth Exchange is 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 essentially a a an exchange and a marketplace unto itself, and with the the that continual movement, there are a lot of different exchanges, tier one exchanges that want to be involved and want to potentially have association with a uh, carbon exchange. So that's, we're, we're leveraging that and it's giving us the ability to have some very high level discussions with uh, all the tier one exchanges, um, which we're really excited about. Um, and also too, will serve our purpose in the future when we want to list new tokens and have preferential treatment um, because we're going to be uh, either strategically partnered with these exchanges or we'll be doing, um, you know, varying types of uh, promotions with them and, and, and cross promotional activities um, on our, on our different platforms, including all of our, our, our seven legacy projects. So. And that, really that, that, that transition uh from debt to chrysalis chad that will be an exchange uh on the tokens they'll be swapped right yeah one for one so there's no right now um 
there's the all, all the all the value uh, will remain the same. It'll just be an equal swap regardless of what the price is. Um, when we actually do the uh, the 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 transition from from debt to Chris, mm -hmm. and um, there's no uh, we have really no um, no plans in the immediate future to change anything. So um, we're just going to get through this. Uh, uh, we're going to get through this transition and the rebranding. Um, and, you know, kind of turn the page on the past and, you know, get down the road on, on, on the future of the, of the Chris platform and the, and the Chris community. So she had one of the, one of the questions that I hear, uh, you know, from time to time is why rebrand? What's the kind of the, the, the purpose behind rebranding? I know you and I have had some conversations about that, but, uh, you know, people ask, you know, this is the only, only company that's had, you know, the success with, with regulators that we have, why would, uh, why would you rebrand? Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, unfortunate because, um, you know, as everybody liked, uh, the, the branding in the beginning, um, it's, it's just, it sustained too many, too many, too much damage. Um, unfortunately sec, you know, uh, drug us through, the mud and uh, again it's 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 very difficult to turn the page on the past um talking about strategic relationships and talking about you know strategic partners working with you know the heads of countries on different platforms and 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 the association regardless of whether we were in the right or in the wrong we were in the right <laughs> um you know uh we weren't selling unregistered securities and um, again, we, you know, firmly believe that, uh, you know, we were doing, you know, everything the way we should have been doing it. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, the SEC didn't see it the same way. So um, it's just time. It's time to, to, to turn the page on that. Um, it was very traumatic for everybody and we just need to get past it. So um, we're, we're not looking, you know, through the rear view mirror anymore. We're looking through the windshield. And uh, we're just going to go forward. And, um, you know, it's now time for, for a little bit of a facelift. So Chrysalis is it. And it fits our, our, our philosophy and our strategy and our, our strategic uh, positioning uh, a little bit better than, than, than the debt box um, did. And, again, I think it's just, uh, you know, it's about transformation. It's about growing. It's about, you know, you know continuing to rise, all these things. Um, so it's 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 a way for us to to you know finally close that chapter and and move on in in the next step of our journey together with our uh, with our base and continue to grow uh, you know what we're doing. Yeah, and and as we round the corner here with uh, with the rollout of Chris, we'll be able to come out with kind of the process and the the method in which that exchange takes place as well. Yeah, we're gonna. I mean, obviously, we've 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 had our our, our technical challenges, and um, you know, from from the beginning, and and um, and this is not abnormal for for any you know any any company that's trailblazing or 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 you know uh, doing something innovative and new. Um, we're gonna try to make it as painless as possible for the community to be able to swap their tokens and and be able to exchange their debt for Chris. Um, at the appropriate time. So yeah, there'll be there'll be uh, very comprehensive uh, instructions on what to do. And again, um, as you well know, we're, we're we're trying to make it as as painless as possible for the community to be able to 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 comply with uh, what needs what's what's going to be needed to make that happen. But we're we're excited about that because um, you know it 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 also ushers in uh, kind of a you know a new chapter in our journey and. Um, the exchanges that we're talking to and the people that we're talking to and the partners and all all of the exciting things that we have and we've been working on, you know, everybody's excited about, you know, getting past the the, the history of this and, and, and moving on to uh, uh, the next, you know, the next chapter in the journey. Yeah. So let's uh, let's talk about how it works, Chad. Let's uh, let's hit that next slide you've got. Yeah. So building, uh, you know, a dynamic portfolio, um, obviously, uh, it's, you know, it's, you know, nothing, nothing new to the community. It's, it's, you know, our, our, our utility token, Chris, is, is going to be the, the, the center of our universe. And, you know, everything is going to flow through it for, for now. Um, you know, we'll 
will continue to uh, uh, have the ability to mint uh, our NFTs. Um, we'll be coming out with a, with a new pricing scheme um, that's um, similar to uh, our origin, but but a little bit different and uh, a little uh, a little more uh, uh, realistic uh, from a standpoint of, of of where we think the value is uh, today for the projects. Um, and again, um, you know, we're uh, licensed and regulated in Abu Dhabi. And so um, we, we, we don't have those restrictions outside the United States. So we're going to continue to, um, you know, push forward on um, being compliant and, and, and making sure that we're uh, following all the rules uh, in the jurisdiction from which we're operating and, and how we're doing what we're doing. Um, we're also, uh, as we've, we've stated in the past, um, you know, we, we decided to build our own NFT marketplace because um, we uh, we want to uh, you know we want to we want to preserve the safety for our community and the assets of our our our, our movement uh, members and um, and the ability for for them not to have to you know necessarily expose themselves to you know unregistered or or, or unregulated you know. Uh, you know, marketplaces, um, it, it just comes, it's fraught with a lot of security issues. And again, there was a, there was a time where, you know, people were getting scammed and people were getting, you know, their wallets emptied and it was just, you know, it's heartbreaking and it's very, you know, very frustrating because, you know, the bad guys are out there and, and they continue to, to, to come at the, uh, you know, the platforms that have value. And, um, again, it's just, you know, you know, security and, and, uh, safety is, you know, of the utmost importance to us. So we want to make sure we protect our, our movement members and community members and, you know, build our own, uh, build our own ecosystem uh, and vertically continue to vertically integrate and not have to expose people to um, third parties as, as, as much as we can avoid it. So with that said, you know, um, the, uh, the legacy minting will begin. Um, that's, Probably, uh, it's probably going to start in the month of September, August. Uh, we're going to use as this rebranding and transitional period. Um, there are uh, new smart contracts being written um, now that hopefully will be finished um, as close to the beginning of September as possible so that we're able to um, uh, uh, completely uh, move off of the legacy tech and, uh, you know, be able to, uh, you know, uh, operate the, our, our Chris platform from, from, uh, uh, our, our seats and then basically, um, continue to grow it from there as we move towards the L1. So, um, obviously the L1 is, is, is the goal, um, that, that process has been a few years in the making, unfortunately with a year long hiatus that was forced upon us. Um, we lost some momentum and time, but, uh, you know, we're trying to make up for that as quickly as we can. And we're hurtling towards that, and it's very exciting. And there's there's some additional information I'll share on this with you about that. But um, that's the goal. The goal is to get to the L1. And in the meantime, uh, legacy minting will begin probably, you know, within the next hopefully 30 days. And um, we'll be able to get back on track and expanding our community and and continually, uh, you know, uh, bringing new people into our ecosystem and showing them what we're all about. So, Shed, you know, uh, something that can be expected, I guess, going forward here is that, um, you know, we'll have a website and a DAP that will be presented so that people can get information. They don't necessarily have to log in through the DAP to get the information that they need. They'll all they'll have a, a website to to visit to see about Chrysalis, what Chris is, and so forth. But as they progress forward and 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 want to access the information or, or or collect the rewards and so forth, they'll they'll go through a DAP as well. Yeah, it's our DAP. Um, obviously, we developed it. We we developed the formal the the, the former DAP as well. Um, when the um, when the decision was made in V1 to V2 that um, we wanted to get away from the phone app um, and become more decentralized. So we um, we will continue on that path. Um, we are 
there's many things that are being contemplated with regards to our technology platform, um, which we'll get into here in a little bit. But uh, for the most part, yes, um, we tried to keep, as you can see in this presentation, we tried to keep the website super clean, um, very straightforward. Um, hopefully it's intuitive to people. Um, we're not trying to clutter it or make it, um, you know, um, you know, uh, unintuitive or, or for people that are, are beginners or, or that are new to this industry, because there's quite a few people that are new. Obviously, it's it's growing all the time, but um, the, the vast... Yeah, you get that. You get that with the emerging technologies always. So but the vast majority of the people are, are, are new to this industry. Um, the people that are familiar with it are in the minority for sure. So, but as that grows... We're, we're, we're trying to, you know, move and adapt and, and, and help people along. Um, education is always good and uh, information is key. So we try to keep this design super straightforward and clean. Um, we're really happy with it and uh, we're really excited about it. So, again, these are our, our projects. Uh, and, again, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be shortly uh, and, you know, at the appropriate time, we'll have some new projects to breathe some new life into the ecosystem, but uh, those are very exciting. We'll save that for another uh, uh, live and, um, you know, when we get to that stage, but but these are the projects that we're focused on right now and that will be going forward. So now I'm to basically our ecosystem. And um, well, maybe I'll go back real quick. And um, I wanted to give uh, a little bit of a synopsis about these projects. Um, and, um, you know, update everybody or reiterate or, you know, re-go over some of the milestones that we've we've made. There's been some announcements. I mean, this constantly comes up in the chats about more information, more information, which a lot of it has already been announced, but um, I'll just I'll just go over some of the highlights of, of the project. So um, with Aluminum, um, our local partner in Ghana uh, entered into an expanding role for the commercialization of uh, uh, aluminum production in the country. And that, that agreement was signed at the beginning of this year. So um, that's going to increase uh, Ghana's capability uh, through uh, our strategic local partner to produce uh, more uh, aluminum capacity, which is gonna ultimately you know, support our buy and burn mechanism right. and um, is uh, going to uh, positively contribute to the token economics um, in the design. Um, our, our DLG project, um, as we announced uh, probably two months ago, um, we've entered commercial production on one of the mines, and um, we're in the we've broken ground on the second mine, and we're in the process of, of getting that project up and uh, into production. There's a third and a fourth now that we're contemplating and, and still negotiating on yet to be done, but I'll be headed to Ghana soon to hopefully, um, you know, do a full uh, do a full uh, round on all the projects and 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 get some content and and video and pictures and updates for everybody on that. And um, but the current mine that we're uh, we have production coming out of is. Is, is really exciting. It's coming out at 23.36 uh, carats straight out of the ground, which 24 carats is the highest. So this is very pure gold. We're obviously in the right place, um, places and, and, and excited to continue to expand that, um, which will be, uh, you know, reflected in the burn notices. Um, I also think it's important to, to mention, because this continually comes up, about royalties, royalties, royalties. And, and again, the royalties have always been there. Um, there's four mechanisms that the royalties uh, uh, are affected. And again, um, that's pinned in the announcement. Um, and I've shared it with a number of different community members uh, over the last few weeks. Um, and, you know, the 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 breakdown of the, uh, of the mechanisms for the burns uh, and the royalties are not going to be uh, singled out. Um, they'll always be um, uh, uh, represented uh, through the burn notices. But one of the things that we have uh, decided to do is to start quarterly, um, you know, comparing the burn notices from the past and being able to show uh, increases or decreases or unchanged uh, amounts of the burn so that people can 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 gauge for themselves the 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 progress on the projects. 
And again, you know, these are longer term projects. So unfortunately, they just don't have the 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 daily, weekly, uh, you know, monthly uh, announcement, uh, you know, capabilities because these are longer term projects that go and go. And so um, it's more of a, a longer time horizon, which um, we've always professed from the beginning. And so that will continue how we do it. But we think by adding a quarterly you know, uh, burn comparison on kind of the history of where it's been and where it's going will 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 help keep people uh, informed about the projects. I'll also too say that we've I, I've recommitted now to a monthly newsletter, um, whereby we'll be distributing that. You'll you'll be able to go uh, onto the Chrysalis website and sign up for the newsletter, um, and there'll be a monthly. Uh, uh, you know, project update for everything that we're doing. And if there's no update, it'll it'll state that, you know, it's basically status quo, but it'll be there and people don't need to continue to ask for updates. They'll just be provided. So we're hoping that will, you know, basically be a little bit more transparent uh, to the community and, and, and help with people's uh, ability to stay up on, on, on the latest and greatest uh, of what's happening. Um, so, Data center mining um, uh, is 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 being reinitiated. Um, unfortunately, all these projects, you know, um, with regards to what happened with SEC, you know, caused us to have this this almost year long um, hiatus. And um, but over the last you know two months since the 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 case was dismissed, we've we've been busy reinitiating our strategic relationships uh, with our partners. A lot of people were standing on the sidelines uh, waiting to see what happened or what was going to happen. And now that that's, you know, that outcome has been achieved, um, you know, we're back in business and we're, we're moving forward again. Um, obviously this is a, a bit of a machine. It's, it's not like a, a button or a light switch that we flick and it just happens. So, um, you know, we appreciate the communities uh, and the movement members' patience on our ability to get things back up and running and, and back up to full speed. But we're 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 very busy doing that. Um, Data center mining has uh, entered into a land lease agreement uh, for some strategically placed property um, near some of our uh, Nat G uh, operations. And uh, we'll be utilizing and will truly, you know, be demonstrating the ecosystem on how some of these projects overlap with one another and benefit each other by providing, um, you know, very favorable uh, rates, um, electricity rates to run the digital mines um, that we're um, in the process of, of, of getting back up to speed. Um, we've we've also signed a uh, a new strategic partnership with a digital mine um, company, and more information will be coming out uh, uh, about that. But um, we're uh, basically back on track to to get that started, and we've got the location uh, arranged, and we're in the process of moving forward and building the first two digital mines, with hopefully many many more to come. So that should be. Uh, Pretty exciting. Um, obviously, with mine. the um, strategic relationship between uh, data center mining and Nat, Nat G, um, you know, uh, essentially data center mining will be paying Nat G um, for uh, the uh, natural gas that it uses to uh, run the miners and the digital mines. So um, that will be uh, positively affecting uh, Nat G's tokenomics. And um, again, it's it's a benefit to DCM because it's getting uh, very favorable energy rates. And we all know uh, in mining Bitcoin, those who do it with the lowest energy cost win. So that's a really that's a really good um, demonstration of the ecosystem at work. Um, again, both um, both Nat G and 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 BGLD um, in uh, Ghana, um, you know, signed a historic onshore uh, agreement. Um, uh, exploration and production agreement for the work that we did in Jamaro uh, district in the western region and um you know as we've we've uh, said and announced that completely separate to what we're doing um there's been a a, a, a first phase commitment from uh, international uh, companies to come in and spend 60 billion dollars in that district developing a multi-phase infrastructure 
uh, project for uh, the refining of crude oil and for the distribution of natural gas. So, um, you know, our little project that we started 38 months ago, um, we obviously are in the right district, um, you know. Oh, yeah, with, absolutely. With regards to, to having that kind of vote of confidence from the international oil and gas community, um, you know, pledging that amount of, of resources to building infrastructure there, they, I, I would, I would think it's, it's common sense that they agree that, you know, there's a lot of oil and gas there. So it's very exciting. Um, I was a bit surprised that the community didn't really pick up on some of them did some of the people did, but not everybody. And again, it's a specialized industry. And, you know, if you're not familiar, you're not familiar, but the fact that you know other international companies have now come come in behind us and committed sixty billion dollars. The first phase being a twelve billion dollar commitment, which was signed um, with the Ghana government in the exact district that we're in, um, says a whole lot. Says that hey, uh, you know what you guys started with XPLR and 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 the work that that we did um, there and the development of this oil and gas field is going to be massive. Um, and is going to uh, pay dividends for for many many years to come. So we're extremely excited about that, and and our hats off to our our local partner Mensons in Ghana about this. Um, they've done a phenomenal job, and um, this is historic. It's never been done before. So again, um, we're really really excited about that. Um, in addition to that, we we we've, we've made some progress on the on the agriculture as well. Um, you mentioned before that uh, Minate Green, our uh, local partner in Ghana, who are basically in the northern and upper eastern regions, have now started to uh, not only, you know, uh, continue to process and grow cash crops with soybeans, uh, soybeans, organic soybeans being the, the, the biggest, but, you know, rice um, and uh, cocoa beans, the, there have been um, some some progress made in 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 strategic development of processing uh, facilities um, for both uh, soybeans and for uh, cocoa, which increases the amount of revenue that will be coming through and will positively impact the the token economics of grow. Um, there's a lot of uh, really exciting things happening around grow. That will reserve for a future uh, uh, announcement and live, but um, some really good things happening there. And then, based on the work that was done, uh, you know, here uh, in North America and also in Africa, XPLR is 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 due, um, you know, receivables from uh, these projects for the exploration work that it was able to successfully conduct. And again, some of that is 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 uh, uh, reliant upon. Uh, production starting for some of these projects, but but you know XPLR being the one of our seven projects that's more like a service than it is like a product or a raw commodity. Um, you know there are there is there is good momentum there as well, and there are multiple projects that are uh, you know uh, beating down our door um, that we're considering for XPLR. Uh, including not limited to an internal uh, capability through our partners at Promax, which XPLR was just awarded uh, the monitoring and reporting contract for Earth Exchange. So through the satellite technology, um, uh, uh, XPLR will be conducting a lot of the surveying work that's done for Earth Exchange, and we'll be receiving uh, you know royalties from that. So there's again the ecosystem at work, and you're seeing two of the digital platforms are now crossing. Uh, over on one another, benefiting each other. And so that's another exciting development that's taken place that we can share. Again, that's going to positively impact the token economics. So while we wait for the production of these oil and gas fields to get up and running. So that's kind of uh, it's kind of where we are as far as our, our, our legacy projects. Um, let's uh, go straight into the ecosystem and, and, and more information about our layer one protocol. Um, I'm extremely excited about this. This has been a long time coming, and uh, the momentum has has picked back up again here. And we're moving as quickly as we possibly can to to get to the layer one because the layer one holds a lot of the value for our ecosystem, and will obviously uh, be uh, very key in um, in our L2 strategy. So, with that said, um, I need to clarify a couple things. 
um, just for the purpose of this presentation, um, tokens can be, the word token is used um, pretty liberally in the Web3 space, but can mean uh, a number of different things. Yeah. It's not, a token is not just a coin or it can be an NFT, <clears throat> pardon me, or it can be an image versus a dynamic NFT that we believe that, that we, you know, created and founded with regard to our projects, um, these are, are non-fungible, which means they're unique, right? And uh, when they're unique, they're 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 individual. Essentially, they they're they're not fungible, meaning like not exchangeable, not 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 inter interchangeable with others. Correct. So, like the like the transition from from debt token to Chris token, that's fungible because one for one is equal to, right? Um, an NFT is unique to that individual holder, right? It's got its own unique ID. And so, and, and that is sometimes called a token. So- And, and unique um, properties, unique rewards, unique value. Yeah, there's many different things that an NFT or a token can can represent. So um, it gets a little bit confusing, but, but, but we need to make that distinction. And there's a reason why, which will be coming here uh, in a minute. But um, so, so what makes our L1 special, right? What, what, what differentiates us from, from, from everybody else? Well, we are the future of blockchain architecture. And I, I, I can't stress this enough. I, I mean, our, our L1 is, and our protocol is, is, is very different than anything that currently exists. Um, traditional tokens in various architectures, including blockchains, are defined by single or limited sets of instructions that um, these uh, uh, tokenomics or the blockchains are limited to. Our layer one is not limited to that. Um, we combine many different uh, uh, attributes um, within our um, process, which is uh, instructions, um, data elements um, from multiple uh, nano chains, and also uh, our our functioning is modular and can be customized. So it really provides a lot more flexibility than what any of the existing, um, you know, uh, popular uh, blockchains have. Um, some of those being Ethereum, um, uh, Solana, um, you know, even the even the hyperledger, right, which was developed by by IBM, it's th these are limited, um, and again, they're not the they're not the future of the the blockchain architecture. Um, and in fact, um, there's a lot of limiting factors that are starting to be realized by these uh, existing blockchains, uh, only because again, they were it's an emerging market. Nobody kind of had done it before, and so with the uh, you know, popularization of them. Um, there are many different things, challenges that are coming down uh, the pipe that a lot of people, a lot of the developers didn't realize or, or, or weren't, you know, counting on that they're having to contend with now. But our layer one is easily uh, tailored to whatever the project is that, that, that you know, it, it, its requirements, uh, you know, call for or need. And so that's going to give us a that's going to give us a, a competitive edge over over all the current existing blockchains that are out there. So we uh, categorize there being um, three types of tokens. And again, tokens can mean coins, or they can mean NFTs, or they could mean something that's you know essentially non fungible, right? So there's a process token, which is essentially uh, the management and control of a process. So that process uh, could be one of many things, but um, our tokens being able to be programmed and smart allow for more flexibility with regards to different types of industries and, and projects. So we allow for uh, complete flexibility with regard to a process token. And then there are asset tokens, which more people are familiar with, right? Which is just like, you know, a loom, BGLD or XPLR, these are tokens that represent a store of value or ownership, 
of something that you hold um, in the digital space. And then there are uh, what we call exchange tokens, which are essentially uh, functions and controls that provide data and, 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 and the management of transfers or uh, the exchange of information, um, you know, such as, you know, a sale or a purchase or uh, a security or a commodity um, and other different types of assets, which will, which will play into our ecosystem down the road. That's one of the that's one of the other digital platforms I mentioned earlier, um, the fourth digital platform that's coming. So, uh, why is why is any of this relevant to us? Well, it's relevant because our flexibility and our technology allows us to essentially, you know, uh, go into some industries that haven't been approached before, and haven't really been built out yet. So there's there's still uh, you know, uh, you know, very virgin ground for us to go in and start having conversations about tokenizing real world assets or tokenizing real world revenue streams that have not been able to be utilized in the past. Um, so our layer one creates a better way uh, of ensuring the integrity and the security of what we're what we're talking about and being able to um, essentially um, uh, be a little bit more nimble and light. Um, a lot of these uh, traditional uh, layer one protocols all run on a single ledger. So they're becoming uh, very data heavy and they're slowing down the networks. And so this is one of these examples that, uh, you know, weren't originally contemplated that's now coming to bear because these expanding ledgers are becoming, you know, very cumbersome and are requiring more data storage um, with all uh, having 100% of the transaction histories have to be there for it to function properly. And so this is becoming a problem. You know, In short, we have our own way of solving uh, this double spend or the forgery of tokens. And uh, again, what that, what that allows us to do with the witness, observer, user, and the time is mean that, that we're, we're much faster and, and safer um, than traditional blockchains. Um, reason for this is because <clears throat> they're sequential. We are non-sequential. And so what does that mean? That means that, that the sequential uh, means that elements have to go in an order to function properly, um, which makes, makes that process eventually inefficient. And just imagine how many transactions are happening over Ethereum uh, on a given day, right? It's massive. So um, there's a certain amount of, of latency that's associated with that platform, which slows it down. Hence, the need to uh, increase the gas fees. You know, we're non-sequential. We don't need those elements to fall into a specific uh, sequence to uh, actually uh, perform. So um, those elements uh, from our chain or our nano chains can happen independently. And then when they all fall into place, the function is triggered. So that's another thing that 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 really separates us from uh, you know these traditional blockchains, which is going to give us a huge edge. Um, they have fixed security. They they have to rely on exactly what um, is currently available in the marketplace as far as security protocols are concerned. Um, us always being very very um, uh, cognizant of security and safety. Um, you know our features are scalable in complexity. We don't have to apply the same type of security protocols for every piece of information that we transfer over our protocol. Um, so we can we can emphasize um, deeper encryption or deeper security on certain aspects of it. Uh, an example of this would be like protecting your phone number doesn't need to be as encrypted as protecting your bank account number, right? Obviously, there's certain information that's more valuable than others and different levels of security you know, should and would apply, uh, hence freeing up the network to be more efficient and move quicker. Um, part of that, uh, it, it, which, which makes us, you know, quite a bit different, is our ability to have um, not only core ledgers, but sub-ledgers or nano uh, ledgers, um, or 
being able to uh, use portions of ledgers and not full ledgers to function like the last four to five transactions to create a new block. And um, this gets into the ability to become much more nimble. Um, uh, we're super fast. Um, we're the fastest existing, we're, we're the fastest block, blockchain network that exists that we know of. Um, and this has been tested over years and is currently demonstrating a 10,000% increase with every thousand nodes um, added to the network. So what does this mean? This means that we're essentially, uh, you know, much faster than, than the existing blockchains that are out there, which will mean that transaction time and gas fees will be much, much less. Um, this will also give us an unfair advantage over our competitors. And so um, we're, we're looking forward uh, to, to, to bringing that out. This will also attract the, the best of the best L2 projects that want to um, launch on our L1. So uh, we're quite, quite excited about that. There's a lot of other limitations that happen, not only in the security, but in the single issuance, um, the single master ledgers that they uh, have to maintain, the, um, uh, uh, and the single party tokenization that they have. So those tokens are essentially you know, issued and held by one person and that's its complete functionality. It's a store of value and holding it is you know, its ownership. Um, we don't have those limitations. Um, we can have multiple issuers uh, on riding on the same on our same L1 blockchain. Um, we can have cross chains. We can have layered chains, nano chains. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have a core ledger, but we have sub ledgers and nano ledgers, which allows us to be faster uh, and quicker. Um, while his historical blockchains are becoming more bogged down and data heavy. Um, uh, we we are the reverse of that. So as more nodes come onto the network, the faster we become, the safer we become, the better our our network becomes. And because it doesn't need to be as data heavy, um, a uh, a smartphone can become a node. And again, the the larger the network grows, the safer it becomes, and the faster it gets. Um, these are all massive advantages that you'll you'll see play out over time. But these are the things that really give us uh, an unfair advantage over the competition. Um, I also think that uh, you know having uh, the ability to uh, have multiple issuances in regards to our tokens, whether they're NFTs or coins or smart tokens, whatever you want to call them. Um, uh, and I'll give you an example. Imagine imagine buying a fractional ownership of a Bitcoin miner. So you're not buying the full the full the full uh, ant miner. You're buying a portion of it. Um, again, uh, a fractional ownership is 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 essentially at the heart of tokenization. Um, that that could be true with any other kind of type of property. It, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it, it could be something tangible. It could be something that's 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 intangible as well. But you know, imagine an asset token that breaks up the cash flow over a group of people who are sharing the production of a particular oil well. Um, it's generating, you know, 10 barrels of oil a month or 30 barrels of oil a month. And that's owned by maybe one or, or a small group of people in, in, in that particular well. Um, imagine another asset token that allows an individual or a group of individuals to own a particular square meter of earth. Um, and that's set in one of our gold mines. And any of the production that comes out through satellite technology identifying that square meter of Earth goes to them directly. Um, imagine uh, a multi-party token that enables an individual, a group, a group of people to participate in the sales of products that come out of a popular store. Um, you know, all of these things we can do and uh, they're, they're, they're very possible. Um, with a lot of the uh, historic uh, uh, technology out there, it's it's extremely limited, and they can't go into these areas. So, again, you know, we're very excited uh, about that coming online. Um, again, there's uh, legacy applications, as I mentioned before, that will help you know existing Web three companies and tokenized projects be better 
So we also have um, the ability to approach existing uh, like-minded uh, organizations that have been running their projects that are already successful, but that want to take the next step and, and, and rise to the next level and become, um, you know, with regards to better safety, integrity, their capabilities, flexibilities, and add another layer to what they've already been able to accomplish. So, um, you know, with a lot of people out there um, trying to create blockchain enabled projects, um, you know, we're really, we're really going to be focused on the uh, quality, not the quantity. And uh, again, Chromax Digital, you know, won't work with everybody, um, but we will work with those that demonstrate um, serious potential. And uh, not only will will our platform trans transform assets through innovation, tokenization, and, and benefiting our own utility token, Chris, uh, through the incubation of these, uh, you know, uh, L2 projects, or you know, uh, bringing these uh, beautiful butterflies to to bear. Um, like an investment bank, we're also uh, going to be looking to take a piece of all these L2 projects. Um, and uh, being able that that right on, on our layer one, and being able to, um, you know, be the birthplace of where these successful projects come from. So our platform will act uh, as the transforming uh, difference for projects that are rooted in the same attributes of our real world asset projects, with mechanisms uh, for every Chris movement holder to benefit from. So, and the way that we're going to do this. Um, cause it's one thing to say it and it sounds great, but you know, there's always that, well, how are you going to do this? <laughs> well, there's been a lot of, of, of time and planning and, 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 and thought put into this. So the process will be determined by assessing the following, you know, criteria. We're going to, you know, define the data and the actions of the L2 projects that we're looking for. So the token types the immutable data, the token functionalities that are needed for some of these uh, either existing or new uh, projects that, that we want to consider. Um, we're gonna define their process um, by looking at the internal actors and doing our diligence on the players uh, and being, um, um, you know, being fully understandable about the inputs and the outputs of whatever the project is that are coming in and then making sure that the flows for the project, you know, make sense and, and, and have the ability to be successful. You know, we're going to establish the rules, meaning, you know, again, the tokens, coins or NFTs or whatever they may be um, are realistic and make sense. And then uh, understanding the external actors or the audience for these projects that are going to come. And then finally, you know, making sure that we have a clearly defined outcome for each of our L2 projects of what they're trying to achieve and what 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 level they're trying to reach. You know, when these processes and criteria are found and match up with us, we know uh, we know we've got a winner. And, and, and that will be the mechanism and the process of how Promax Digital brings these new projects on and brings them to market. So. You know, with that said, we've got a lot to offer the community and um, we've got a lot to offer uh, the Web3 space. And again, um, we're trailblazing on the cutting edge of technology with our, our L1 uh, protocol, uh, which we'll do hopefully in not too long, another one of these where I'll be walking you through how um, the branding of the uh, of our, our L1 uh, will stack up against, um, you know, the Ethereum's and the Solana's and all these other, uh, you know, traditional blockchains. So, you know, Shed, one of the things that excites me most about this portion of it is the fact that, that the ledger uh, is not just a, a sequential ledger. And I know we talked a bit about that, but the fact that this ledger has a master ledger and it's got a core ledger and it's got sub ledgers and nano ledgers that really increase that speed so that as we add, we're able to increase the speed of the, uh, of the network as opposed to slow it down, like is done with the, uh, with the uh, other uh, blockchain technology that's out there available today. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's revolutionary and it's, it's, 
it's quite interesting. You know, I, uh, I teased this in the community a few weeks ago and, and, and one, uh, I can't remember who it was. I, I wish I could give them uh, a shout out, but one of the, one of the folks realized that because of the witness, the observer, the user and the time, they realized that the only four nodes need to be present to be able to, 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 to actually perform. Right. And so that individual realized what this thing can actually do, which is, you know, this is a this is a you know an F twenty two Raptor versus you know uh, these existing uh, uh, you know seven forty sevens that that are, are are currently flying the skies, and uh, what that means is when we set this blockchain uh, free, when we actually release our protocol, um, as long as um, uh, there are at least four nodes operating at any one time, it cannot be shut down. So that means that essentially the true decentralization of what we're talking about becomes a, a realistic uh, reality because there are no servers, no one servers anywhere in the world that and actually support this blockchain. Meaning that once, once we grow uh, the amount of nodes onto the blockchain, uh, there's no one country, one regulatory agency, one anything that could that could take this network down. It will it will continue to live on as long as there's at least four nodes operating in the world somewhere. Um, it will continue to 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 uh, function, and that's that's exciting because again, you know, we had a real world example of uh, <laughs> of government overreach here, and um, you know we were. You know, we were almost taken out of the game. And again, a lot of these other companies, you know, have to uh, have to essentially function, um, you know, under a uh, certain type of government, uh, you know, uh, oversight. Um, but what we're talking about is continuing what, you know, Santoshi originally, um, you know, created, which is truly a decentralized network that that nobody controls or owns. Um, that it's completely decentralized for the people and by the people. And uh, the larger it gets, um, that's why I call this a movement, because it's more of a movement than it is a company. This is not, not necessarily a company. It's not about one individual or a small group of individuals. This is about uh, a revolution uh, and a movement of, of you know, blockchain technology that is is truly innovative and that has not you know seen the light of day yet and we happen to be fortunate enough to you know have that technology and be able to bring that to bear so again yeah it's very exciting i, I couldn't agree more yeah. and can't wait until we get there because i believe it's going to attract uh many many people and it, when people realize what what this blockchain can do and 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 the the, the flexibility and capability of it I think everybody everybody's going to want their project on our layer one. I totally agree. Totally agree. Now, she had one thing that uh, you know we've been going here for about an hour, uh, and you know I don't want to drag this out too much. Uh, I do want to make a, a couple of comments, and then I want to touch on something that you brought up earlier today when we were talking about uh, about the uh, projects that are out there. Um, so. Uh, a lot of the, the the information that goes back and forth between what we're providing and what we're not providing and, 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 and what is lacking, I believe could be a, a bit of a breakdown in understanding what what's not understood. You know, I, I, I've been back and forth with with uh, one of the one of the participants here uh, in the chat for a bit, and it, it, it's become a little bit apparent that some of the information they're looking for is not readily available. Uh, in, in the industry, it's not readily available by us being provided by us, part of which was, you know, part of the reason for some of that is that we've been, we've been pretty held down, not able to talk, not really able to communicate the things we'd like to communicate. But some of that information comes through the nuances. For instance, you know, um, the way that the contracts work for the royalties that are shared out there that, that, that come in, uh, that's really in the hands of the, of the contributor based on the contract. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we well, don't. We if, if if let's say corn's being sold, we don't we don't determine when corn is sold by the by the farmer who's contributing that corn or those royalties on that corn. That is 
that's handled by the farmer. And then that, that, that rolls through when the farmer decides to sell. So if, they, if they've had a rough year and the price of corn's down and they want to dry their corn, store their corn, and then sell their corn later, that royalty comes in when that sale takes place. And so it's not like, it's not like the supply chain effect. This is very different. Commodities are so different than supply chain. Supply chain is, hey, we're out of water. I need three crates of water. Get those crates of water over here so we can put them in the store. Very, very much different than the commodity industry like pork bellies or oil and gas or, or uh, corn or beans or anything like that. If they've got a bad year, they've got a bad year. If they've got a year where the price is down, the price is down. If you've got in the oil and gas industry, you may have a field that's down because of an EPA issue. And yeah. one of the interesting things about oil and gas is the off takers won't pick up. You could be you could be one barrel short of of the minimum that they'll pick up, and they won't pick up for the next thirty days. They won't come until thirty days out, and they don't pay. Some don't pay as much as sixty days out. So they'll do sixty days in the rears, or thirty days in the rears, or forty five days in the rears. Which means that if that if if the field was down and the minimum wasn't hit, then that particular uh, pickup was missed. That's a 30-day window of missed. Then you've got the next 30-day window when they pick it up. They'll pick up the overage. They won't pick up the minimum or the, below the minimum, but they'll pick up an overage. And then when that takes place, there they could be another 30 to 60 days out. And that all depends on who the off-taker is for that particular field. It also has to do with what their contract is because each jurisdiction has minimums. In a lot of the U.S., you'll either have a royalty payment that comes out quarterly. Uh, it, if it's anything different than quarterly, that would be due to the contributor. Oh, to do it at a different time. Um, right. The uh, somebody unmuted. Um, so one of the other interesting things is that some of those jurisdictions require the 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 the. the, the uh, the royalties paid out either semi-annually or even annually. And so, yeah, I mean, listen, Roy, the, the reality is that these things are, are all very complicated and nuanced. Yeah. And that's why uh, we continue to say that, you know, the reality uh, for the community is that, you know, you need to pay attention to the burn notices. The burn notices will reflect everything, um, but it won't single out, you know, whether, you know, the, the the farmer uh, had a good month or had a poor month or 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 one oil and gas field had a had a had a better production uh, or lesser production. So again, um, and then you know, throwing a, a year long forced hiatus into the middle of this entire thing, you know, going into our, our our third year, you know, obviously was was a devastating effect, but not to continue to look in the rear view mirror and just look at the look through the windshield is that you know we due to confidentiality agreements that we sign with our 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 local partners as i call them or wherever we're we're, we're doing business on whatever project we're doing business you know that's within their control not ours so again we we once they once they establish that the royalties uh, have begun then they're not allowed to stop, right? That's one of the contractual obligations of the partnerships that we have. Um, again, um, folks have to understand that some of these projects are greenfield projects that are built from the ground up. They're literally, there's, you know, not even a shovel in the ground all the way to the point of now where we're finally getting some traction and some critical mass where producing projects are coming to us and saying we want you to digitize part of our production and again that was always the strategy that was not possible with uh you know the full weight of the federal u.s government uh barring down on our heads right and a lot of people even some of our strategic partners that that we were in discussions with or even in, in contract with said we want we want to just stop. We want to hold on for a second and see what happens here because we're not necessarily sure that, you know, debt box is going to survive. So again, we were, we were challenged with some, you know, very uh, unprecedented uh, circumstances that we're trying to rebound back. But, you know, I will, I will, uh, I will wrap this up by saying that, you know, we're not going to get into, um, 
you know, uh, individualizing uh, one royalty project from one industry to anything other than the, the the burn notices, because again, there's four mechanisms that contribute. the The architecture was designed that way, right? To to get us to critical mass. And again, with these seven projects, there's always been um, it's always been telegraphed to the community that these are long term buy and hold projects. These are not going to be get rich quick schemes. So at the end of the day, um, you know, this this is what our philosophy has been. This is what we're going to continue to do. And again, you know, when we strike oil in Ghana and when we strike gas in Ghana and when we do, um, when we start producing, you know, uh, uh, aluminum and uh, so on and so forth and, and, and expand to different countries and continents around the world and continue to do what we've trailblazed to do, you know, then all those people will, you know, they won't care because they'll see that, you know, look, there's burning going on um, and, you know, the token price is just going up. And that's really, at the end of the day, what the, the vast majority of the community wants is just to see the token price rise. And again, can't blame them, but, you know, we can't explain all the nuances behind the scenes to everybody. Um, to the point where they're going to understand because they're just they're you know we don't we don't have the time to build this this platform or these platforms or this 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 ecosystem or this empire or whatever you want to call it and continue to uh you know stop and, and educate every single um movement holder on uh movement member on 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 how the oil and gas industry fluctuates or how the the exploration industry uh works or how you know, the production of raw commodities work. So at the end of the day, again, um, you know, it's a movement. Um, there's a philosophy. Um, hopefully the, the the new website reflects a lot of those things that we stand for and what we believe in. And uh, again, what we need to do now is is continue to build and expand our, our, our networks and continue to grow. And that's, that's what we're going to do. So Shad, one, one of the last things I want to cover uh, the thing that I'm most excited about is you had made mention of uh, the um, possibility uh, of one of these projects becoming a, its own L2. Yes. So uh, I will I will say that uh, one of these projects on the screen now. Um, is going to elevate to an L2 project. And uh, what what that means is, that means that uh, those NFT holders that are holding that project are going to be uh, very excited because uh, elevating uh, 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 a Chrysalis project to an L2 project so that it stands on its own is going to be very, very exciting. And they're going to be very well rewarded for it because they were in uh, at the very beginning. And so, um, you know, I'll let people, you know, uh, speculate on, on which project they think is going to be the one that's going to elevate, but um, it's pretty exciting and, and I'm looking forward to that. And again, that, that's always been some of the, the long-term planning and design that we've had was to, you know, use the debt box or now Chrysalis to incubate some of these projects and then, and then, and then let them basically elevate to a, to a, to a higher level and kind of um, be able to, uh, uh, you know, operate on on a on a new uh, uh, at a new level. So yeah, very excited about that. One of these one of these one of these uh, seven projects is going to elevate to an an L two uh, in the next uh, hopefully few months. And when that takes place, those those NFT holders are going to be uh, pleasantly surprised. Oh, there's there's there it's going it's going crazy now. People are are, are starting to guess, Shad. <laughs> good <laughs> well and then this is our dap so when 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 yeah, when you go through and yeah. you know the the dap obviously looks the same and it will continue to look the same until such time as we get to the l1 but essentially that's that's where we are and uh it's exciting times and you know we look forward to continuing this journey with 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 everybody um we want to stay positive and we want to stay um you know, uh, focused and, uh, you know, just want to leave you with, uh, you know, God bless you all. And, uh, thank you for your trust and your support. And, uh, 
we look to bring uh, long-term value to each and every one of you. And, uh, you know, Roy and I are as invested in this uh, process as everybody else. So it's our, it's our daily work. And uh, we thank you so much for all your support and can't wait for, you know, these things to, 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 to happen and, and be able to demonstrate that, you know, um, this is all going to come to fruition. So again, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you and we'll, we'll talk again soon. I also will commit to um, doing more lives and doing more um, uh, 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 RWAs uh, in the near future. Um, it's just been an intense time and we've been trying to get through this. So the, the month of August is going to be the rebranding month. And then um, hopefully in September, you know, uh, Legacy Minting is coming back. So yep. get ready. Thank you. Appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. Recording stopped.